Hey everybody, welcome back to The Wolf Pit with another episode of What Are We Eating? If you're new to the channel, welcome aboard! If you like the channel content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. If you haven't seen one of my budget videos before, these recipes can be for anyone in general, but they're specifically made for families who are struggling financially and struggle from meal to meal. So if I say the serving size is for eight people, that's generally for eight moderate servings. Not necessarily enough to get you full, and definitely not enough to have a second serving, but to give you enough nutrition and calories to survive until your next meal. All of these meals will be for $10 or less. So let's get started with today's meal. The main ingredient in today's meal is a one pound bag of dried kidney beans, which costs 90 cents. And you don't have to use kidney beans, you can use any kind of dried beans you like. In my opinion, any kind of dried beans is the best bang for your buck you can get in the grocery store, whether you're on a budget or not. A one pound bag of dried beans is equivalent of two cups of dried beans. Once they're soaked and cooked, each cup of dried beans equals three cups of cooked beans. So each one pound bag of dried beans equals six cups of cooked beans. Is that a delicious, nutritious bargain or what? So we added our dried beans to a pot and rinsed and drained them and picked through for any unwanted debris. Then we filled the pot with water to cover the beans by about two inches. Then we brought them up to a boil, turned the heat off, covered them and let them soak for two hours. And here's what our beans look like after soaking for two hours. As you can see, they've tripled in size. And once again, the great debate, to drain the water that the beans soaked in or to use it. Some people says it removes some of the gas from the beans. And my question is, why would you want to remove the gas from the beans? That takes away all the entertainment the following day. To fortify our bean broth, we added one quart of vegetable broth. Of course, you can add chicken or beef broth but quite a few of you, the people, have requested that I make a vegetarian version of a budget meal. You asked and you shall receive. Then add one large diced yellow onion, fresh chopped garlic, a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes, give that a quick mix. Now another thing you could add into this chili or serve the chili over top of is white rice or any kind of rice you want, which will certainly increase the serving size and or amount of servings. Next add a chopped bell pepper. and a chopped jalapeno pepper. And don't limit your chili to the vegetables that I'm using. You can use any kind of vegetables you like or add any leftover meat you have. Or if your budget allows you, add fresh meat. The only thing that can limit what you make for dinner is your budget and your imagination. Now bring everything back up to a boil, cover the pot, reduce the heat to medium low, and let everything cook for an hour to an hour and a half. Now this next part is totally optional and will make the meal not vegetarian and it's also dependent on you having one egg. Well the recipe calls for one third cup of milk, but you can substitute the milk with water. And that's to make some corn muffins using the Jiffy corn muffin mix. These things have gone up in price. I remember when they used to be four for a dollar, which was a super bargain. 79 cents nowadays isn't really a bargain for this but it's still pretty good stuff if you have it in your budget. So add the box of Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix into a big bowl along with an egg and a third cup of milk or water. Or if you have friendly neighbors and you don't have milk or the egg, ask them can you borrow an egg and a third cup of milk. Neighbors borrowing things from each other like a cup of sugar or a cup of milk used to be the norm. Nowadays, I don't think it's as normal as it used to be. 
So pour your mixed up muffin mix into muffin pans or into a skillet and bake according to the directions. And now back to the chili. After simmering for an hour and a half, the beans are almost done. Now I'm going to add a chopped up yellow squash and a zucchini, along with a 15 ounce can of corn. And last but not least, an envelope of chili seasoning. And this is not something I would normally season my chili with, but spices can be expensive, so I'm using this as an example. If you don't have the spices to make chili, just use one of these seasoning packets. It'll get the job done, but then you can tweak it with whatever you do have on hand. But if you happen to have the seasonings on hand, like chili powder, granulated garlic, granulated onion, cumin, black pepper and salt, or whatever else you like to put in your chili, you can save a little bit of money and omit the seasoning packet. So bring everything back up to a boil, give it a good mix, reduce the heat to medium, and let it simmer for about 30 minutes uncovered until the chili reduces and the vegetables are done to your liking. I don't like mushy vegetables, so I cook it for less time. If you like mushy vegetables, cook for as long as you like. And I can already hear it now. Those die-hard chili enthusiasts. Die ain't chili. It got beans in it. Yeah, chili don't got beans in it. And it also don't got no zucchini and corn in it. You give me a belly goat and an onion and I'll show you how to make chili. That right there is just a vegetable soup flavored like chili. Well, I guess you kind of got a point, but I'm going to call it what I want to call it. Because some people, like myself, like beans in their chili. And they don't care if it's authentic or not. So I guess whenever I make chili, whether it's vegetarian chili or chili with meat and beans, it's not chili. But that's okay with me. It's still delicious. You're dang all right it's not real chili. If you put beans in your chili, it ain't chili. Chili's nothing but meat. This is what you call a bastardization of chili. And there you have it. A hearty bowl of vegetarian chili on a budget, along with non-vegetarian corn muffins, which like I said, are optional. But again, to extend this chili, serve it with rice or pasta, or add the rice or pasta into the chili. And again, don't be afraid to use your imagination and add things you would never think of adding just to make a good cheap meal. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you soon.